G'day guys and gal. In a galaxy full of super soldiers wielding chainswords, demons with 12 boobies, galaxy consuming space bugs, and war loving sentient mushrooms, the Tau generally aren't at the top of the pecking order when it comes to what's cool. Sure, they are sensible, interesting, and fun, but they are not the cool kids on the block. At least they weren't until Commander Farsight appeared, a rebellious Gundam piloting warrior who wields a life force consuming sword, gets stuck into melee combat with Glee, and is such a badass that Korn, the the demon god of war is desperate to claim Farsight for himself. He is also the only Tau to ever defy the Ethereals and create his own successful kingdom, free of their overbearing influence. All in all, definitely a character worth talking about, especially since we have recently gotten a new model for him. Speaking of models, I'm so excited to announce that the Kagi Taurus Cyber Dynasty is now live for one week only. This is the largest major mini launch ever, partnering up with Dungeons and Dreadnoughts to bring you 31 new original models. These models are broken up into different unit types. First up, we have the Cyber Samurai coming in their assault form, which is all about melee, including swords and claws and the like, as well as a marksman squad with railguns, pulse rifles, the whole shebang. Both squads come with an original unique sergeant. The best part is that each model is modular, meaning you can swap their heads, arms, power packs, and shoulder plates around, creating hundreds or even thousands of unique potential combinations if you wanted to buy more than one of each squad. To lead the Cyber Samurai, we have the Psy Overseer, a psychic Cyber Samurai that comes with two weapon options options in one purchase. Continuing on, we have the War Mech, a fully poseable and modular model that comes with both melee and range weapon variants in one package. To complement him, we also have a 10-man squad of Cyber Ashigaru, with multiple helmets, weapons, shoulders, and pose variants. Same versatility as the Cyber Samurai. Now for a more niche unit, we have the Drone Warriors, a 3-man squad of incredibly detailed and interesting robots to add some extra spice to your army. On top of that, we have 5 different drones in the one pack, ranging from war drones to support drones. Last but not least, we have even fit in the Cyber Skimmer, a full-on vehicle with two Cyber Ashigaru to pilot it. I will only be selling the physical models, not STLs. The STLs are not available anywhere, so this is it. As this is quite a lot of models, I've grouped them into various value packs, as well as an option to buy the entire army for a large discount when compared to the individual products. As I've said, the models will only be available for major minis for one week. I don't own the STL files for these, but I do currently have the exclusive manufacturer rights for this for a limited time window. So if you miss out on this drop now, I can't guarantee these models will ever be available again. Link is below. Today we'll go over the life, rise, and exploits of the legendary Commander Farsight and how he brought the rule of cool to the Tau. Now let's get into it. <laughs> Farsight, or Oshava being his uncool town name, was a talented fire warrior from the start. He accelerated through training a lot faster than his fellow students and was known for his fierce determination and independence. The town knew they had a once in a generation warrior here and they intended to use him. His greatest strength was his naturally eidetic memory as well as his extreme adaptability. He would remember all of his engagements, duels, tactics, and never make the same mistake twice. All of this attracted the attention of Commander Puretide, another once in a generation Tau who met Farsight, I'ma just call him Farsight cause it's cooler, and was really impressed with him. But they wouldn't just bend the rules and give him his own battle suit yet, hence he was sent to the front lines of some grueling wars against some big ass spider aliens. Imagine Starship Troopers, it was literally Starship Troopers with all the propaganda included. He distinguished himself as a certified bug squasher and was returned to the Tau Empire to undergo the trial by fire. An incredibly challenging trial that if he passed, he would be allowed to pilot his own battle suit and then the fun would really begin. The trial was really horrific. Farsight and his team were put into a live fire battle dome where eldritch horrors emerged from dark holes to attack them. There wasn't really much a Tau could do here, even one like Farsight, when faced with a bunch of small Cthulhus. So in a moment of self-sacrifice, Farsight was torn apart and killed. But he survived! The whole thing was just a cheeky simulation with only the warriors who died during it, i.e. the brave ones, passed the trial. He quickly mastered his first battle suit and was redeployed against the spider aliens. Battle after battle, he continued to excel, impressing his superiors and even being granted a more advanced battle suit. Eventually, they defeated the vicious aliens and began their journey back. Farsight having gained a lot of renown and prestige. However, during their transit home, shit hit the fan as smaller alien spider swarms burst out of the ship's vents and attacked the unprepared fire warrior commanders, including Farsight in their briefing room. There was no chance to fight back, so Farsight ushered his commanders out and then used his body as a barrier to hold back the spiders through a narrow door as they infested and killed him. But he survived! The whole ship encounter was another simulation to see if Farsight was just some battlesuit slut or if his bravery and selflessness 
selflessness extended beyond that. He passed this test and as such, once again came to the attention of Commander Puretide, who agreed to personally tutor Farsight. Farsight traveled to Puretide's temple in the mountains and met the other two best and brightest living Tao students. Shasera, or her cool name, Shadow Sun, as well as Kai's, who doesn't have a cool name. Cringe. These three learnt all they could from Pure Tide and developed their own methods of war. Farsight was always the best of the three, but not by much. After a hectic training montage, the three students left, all of them masters of their art and far greater than any other Tau had been in the art of war. Farsight's first true battle as a commander would be against the Orcs. The Green Boys had randomly invaded a Tau frontier world and begun dominating the Tau military, who had not yet developed a doctrine for enemies that just retard charges at you with no concept of self-preservation and who could also survive obscene damage. Farsight took his fleet to the world and studied the Orc forces, realizing that they had a simple, exploitable command structure. The biggest Orc was the boss. You assassinate the big one, the rest freak out and attack each other. Hence, Farsight's warriors committed to a series of hit-and-run skirmish tactics, killing orc war bosses and then leaving their warriors very frustrated hence they attacked each other. But this still wasn't enough. The orcs were too many and were able to reproduce faster than the hit and run tactics could kill them. Worse still, they began adapting to the planet and overwhelming it. So Farsight said, fuck this shit, cowabunga it is, and decided the time for skirmishing was over. The time to fuck had begun. He began baiting orc forces into kill zones. Then his Tau warriors would hold the line and come blast the orcs from near point blank range if needed. The Tau watercast members members would film these engagements and send it to the other Tau forces on the planet, teaching them strategy and raising morale. For the first time ever, the Tau were cool and were fighting Warhammer 40k wars how they were always meant to be fought, up close and personal. However, even this wasn't enough. It was at this time that an ethereal, Unshi, arrived and basically told Farsight to pack it up and leave. The planet was to be evacuated. Although Farsight obeyed the order, this was the first time he felt frustrated with an ethereal. But to be fair to the ethereal, once the Tau left, killing a shitload of orcs in the process as the orcs kept zerg rushing the super defended extraction point, the orcs stopped reproducing as fast as there was no more fighting to be had. Hence when the Tau came back a year later with a big army, the orcs were slaughtered and the world recolonized. Overall, an impressive first campaign for Commander Farsight. His next big campaign would be against the Imperium. Tau and Imperial space finally crossed over, with the Tau attempting to peacefully absorb Imperial worlds through diplomacy and trade. The Tau didn't realize that it was poking a very large galaxy spanning bear, but they did and the bear awoke. A large Imperial Armada, which included Space Marines, invaded, massacring the Tau who entered the Imperial space, but then kept going, invading Tau worlds and wiping them clean. Eventually, Farsight caught up and made his stand, intent on holding the Imperium back on one of the Tau worlds. Surprisingly, he did a great job, leading his battlesuit forces against the Space Marines and scoring numerous kills. He adapted to their tactics quickly, ensuring he and his forces were equipped with armor-piercing plasma guns. He was also wildly impressed with the courage and hecticness of Space Marines. Their up-close horror heroic style of battle was a lot more up his alley than the classic Tau engagements. It was a brutal war and a shitload of Tau died, but so too did a shitload of Imperials die. At the end of it, the combined brilliance of Shadow Sun and Farsight overcame the Imperial forces girth and forced them to withdraw from the planet. However, it was here that Farsight would also commit his first act of rebellion against the Ethereals. See, one of his close friends and warriors, Shavastos, as well as numerous other Tau, had received an experimental chip in their brain to help them command in the war. However, the chip was deemed an overall failure, hence its recipients were due to have them removed, lobotomizing them in the process. To protect his friend from this horrific fate, Farsight lied to the Ethereals and claimed that Shavastos had fallen in combat. Regardless, Farsight's efforts over the Orcs and then the Imperium had made him more than a hero. They had made him a figure of legend. Statues of him went up everywhere. There were toys of him made. Every Tau wanted to suck his dick. He lived up to this reputation as well, retaking lost worlds from the Imperium, engaging a fuck-off massive Orc Empire and winning through pure ruthlessness and genius. His tactics even begun to unnerve the Ethereals, but by this point he was the Empire's greatest hero so they let it slide. It was also around this time, after clapping some orc cheeks, that Farsight made his way to the planet of Arthas Malak, pursuing orcs to kill. However, it was actually a corrupted world, and the conflict on it summoned forth the legions of Khorne, or to the Tau, a weird race of New Xeno that was able to teleport out of glowing portals. Thus begun a hectic three-way war between the Tau, orcs, and demons. Due to the nature of the orcs, demons, and Farsight, it was a close and bloody affair. During the fighting against the Bloodthirster, Farsight found the legendary sword Dawn blade and used it in desperation to fight off the greater demon. However, through all the carnage, Farsight saw that all the ethereals accompanying his army had been violently killed. However, despite their loss, his legendary command skills resulted in them destroying
destroying the source of the demonic incursion and then wiping out the orcs. Victory was his. With no ethereals, Farsight's fleet, as well as dozens of worlds he had captured in this far off region of space, at least far by Tau standard, it came to Farsight to make a decision on what to do. Normal procedure would be to immediately return to Tau space to receive new ethereals. See, the Tau were told that without the ethereals, they were fucked. However, Farsight began to realize that the ethereals kind of sucked. They were controlling, secretive, and unnatural, but he also couldn't cope with the idea of betraying the Tau Empire and leading these renegade worlds. So he took a middle ground, not returning to the Tau Empire, but also going into hiding. The worlds he had taken for the Tau became the Farsight Enclaves, and were so far away from Tau space that the Tau Empire struggled to probe and communicate with them. However, something surprising happened. Even without Farsight or the Ethereals, the Enclaves flourished. Unbound by the strict dogma of the Tau Empire, they invented new technologies, whilst changing their logo and colours. When the original Tau Empire eventually discovered the Enclaves were thriving and independent, they cracked the shits. Farsight was now a disgrace, a traitor. His statues and memory were torn down and his supporters hunted down. Now the Tau don't usually live super long. However, Farsight's new sword had a special ability. It would drain the life force of whoever it killed, restoring the wielder. Hence Farsight had become functionally immortal as long as he killed shit, and kill he would, as he left his exile in order to lead his people against the new Tyranid menace. Despite trying everything though, killing their synapse creatures, burning their biomass, asking them nicely to fuck off, the Tyranids were winning. However, due to the genius of Farsight's Earth cast scientists, they were able to develop a bioweapon that upon absorption, rapidly duplicated and annihilated the Tyranid fleet. As the Tyranids had never encountered such a weapon before, they had not yet adapted to deal with it. The Farsight Enclaves were saved at great cost. Enraged by the loss, but also determined, Farsight officially returned from his exile to be the protector his people needed. We last saw Farsight during the Arcs of Omen event, where he once again battled the forces of Chaos and the Orcs on Arthur's Malak. In a bit of deja vu, the Legions of Khorne once again returned, initiating a four-way battle, as the Legions of Khorne were happy to massacre the Chaos forces as well. Farsight was content to die in this battle, the influence of Khorne overwhelming him, but then he snaps out of it and withdraws his forces. Surprisingly, the Orcs ended up killing the Chaos forces and the Khornite Legions, so a bit of a random dub for the Orcs on that one. As the Arcs of Omen was the most recent lore event in the setting, that is where Farsight is now, still protecting the Enclaves and still public enemy number one for the Tau Empire. After all, Farsight proving the Tau don't actually need the Ethereals is a huge no-no. But there are some fun facts about Farsight I want to discuss before we wrap up. Commander Shadow Sun has taken his place as the Tau Empire's savior, and officially she and he are enemies. However, they actually share a close bond, with Shadow Sun defying the Ethereals in secret to occasionally help Farsight. In the Tau Empire, the interbreed and even intermingling of different castes is a no-no. However, in the Enclaves, there is no such restriction. Some Earth cast members even operate their own modified battlesuits. Speaking of battlesuits, Farsight will always enter battle alongside the eight, his top eight elite warriors and generals, one of whom is an Earth cast member and one of Farsight's oldest friends. Kept alive by nanotech that was banned within the Tau Empire, as only the Ethereals may be long lived. Overall, a total fucking badass that actually makes me like the Tau. If you enjoyed the video and you want to support the channel, then pick up some Cyber Dynasty models. Amazing quality, great value, and only available for one week. Hit the subscribe button, then hit the real subscribe button for more cool content. Join the Discord for more memes, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.